and this town's 800 years old. So we are at the start of what would have been the medieval war. That's why it's called Jailford, because all the jails used to be up there. So okay, people are happy let's go. To, to walk up and, yeah. and look at that way. Let's go. A fast flowing river, and there used to be lots of mills there. So it was naturally defended. So that half of town was defended by nature. This side had to have the walls. And this is Jailford, which is, this has all been demolished, but there's been castle walls here and would have been a gate of this town. Here we go. Which probably gives you an idea that along here would have been one of the, the port policies. And this is the start now into the history of Historic history of town. As we go into the town, when there's a big festival like the food festival in September, they close it on the Saturday and the Sunday. That's because there's lots of 20,000 people come to Ludlow, population's 10,500, so it more than doubles in size. But but one of the things of interest here, although this is one of the leading town streets, and you'll see some more old ones as we go into town, things like the Renaissance Centre. So it, the town has got an awful lot of recycling projects, green projects. We're not just charity shops. We have a number of charity shops here, but we also still live in town. We've still got four bakers, five butchers, something like that. If so we just walk through, you'll see it's a very simple brick town. It was originally set up by the Normans, castle in the middle, medieval wall round, or wall round it, and a very square, very bridge you can see the streets going down. When we come to the end of this bit, you'll see that what was the old town hall, this is the Buttercross, and if you look to the left, you'll see Broad Street, I'm sure Power might want to say, that was the most beautiful streets in England, of course. I was once a town councillor and a district councillor before you retreat. So I'm now not a councillor. I can just do stuff. The reason why perhaps I wanted to stop here, instead of going through the main town to start off with, where you can see that's the main medieval market. I thought if you just go round the church in not because my mate owns the church in but then you'll get a glimpse of Shall we go in? I've got time to go into the church where I used to preach. So I just think after the church, to actually see the church where all the, the guilds were, the town made its money on the wall trade. So I think to go that way before we go through. After you go group in the town that do regular tours right, okay. and there's a couple of chaps who do ghost tours mm. they're quite fun i went to one at whitby and they sell, tell similar stories but about ludlow brilliant they haven't got many fishy stories here no. that, <laughs> the smallest well it's a cathedral really it's, it's, it's the largest one of the largest houses and it's one of the largest churches I think yeah, if you want to go, I'd just go for this. Zirikord carvings under the choir stalls here, absolutely beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> oh, do you think I could, if 
we show them outside the group. It's, definitely, it's a lot of steps, I can't remember how many, but you get that panoramic view of Ludlow, um, which is just unbelievable. Okay, so you see you approach it from any you want that again so we get a picture of you? Ludlow, Cooney, Wiz, Marmot in Pembrokeshire. Because the Mortimer family built the castle here, that we're going to see later, and they built the castle down at Narbeth. Apparently, on a Sunday, you can come here with a longbow and you can practice archery and you're quite entitled to kill a Welsh. That actually hasn't been practiced in case law yet, um, but I don't think it's something that we'd encourage people to do. You know, we've got good links with, with Wales, but there's still these traditions that, in theory, you can come here with your longbow and you can practice and you can kill a Welsh. Wouldn't want to prove that one, but that's it. And I think you could, if we walk right towards the you could just see. We were at our all over. So Ludlow isn't parochial. Um, I think it was one of the members of the community who said that when we introduced ourselves to Ludlow, it's, like, it's, it's a tourism town, but it's a living town. We need butchers, bakers, um, we need people to keep it, not just a museum, but a real town. Which I think, by and large, the little pockets of them where people wanted to put something back, they felt perhaps a duty to do something, so there's still a lot of these properties around. And it's the first time I've walked past the church in without going in it, and <laughs> circumvented it, so there's a first there. <laughs> Carol, do you want to say a few words about the market? Carol, do you yes. want to explain yes. about the market and you go through it uh, up to the up to the castle? Lovely. Come on, Nia. Over this way, lovies. Or like the basket maker as well. That's quite nice. Say basket maker over there. Careful. Careful. We're watching Steve. I don't know what's going wrong with your. Maybe you've just got too hot. We've had several. This is an open market now, but during history we've had several attempts to have different sorts of buildings on the top. And in the late mid 80s, it was demolished, the Victorian one. For me, you're now where Ludlow's made its name. The castle in front of you is still accessible. There are festivals there, like food festivals, Shakespeare Way. That was one of the lodges, it's called the lodge, but Ludlow used to administer most of Wales. For a good 300 years, this was effectively the provincial town that ran a large area of Wales. The name Marcher comes from, as I understand it, a series of castles and in the days of Marcher. It's a fortified town like Ludlow to you know, move the troops along and you could fortify what was a hostile front with our friends from. Um, the other side of Offa's Dyke, which is the ditch between Shropshire, Herefordshire and Paris, which is the Welsh county that borders us. But for me, 
We've got halfway. It might be worth just going around and having a look at the castle. And then, perhaps we can have a leisurely walk back. And if there's anything specifically you want to ask, I will all right, we can answer your question. So there's been a lot of houses that have been rebuilt. The castle wasn't damaged much in the Civil War. If, you, if you've got time, if you come back to Ludlow, yeah, by then I will be twittering. I can meet you here and I can take you all the way around. And you can see there's still the um, parliamentary defences that they put up, because Ludlow was under siege. It didn't fall. And when it did fall, it was still largely intact. Most of the damage to the castle is the um, entrepreneurial instincts of the Ludlowian who said, hold on, there's a bit of stone there, I can build something. So most of the damage to the castle isn't as you would think with parliamentarians going over there and sort of uh, uh, cavaliers being piped. It was actually by the local population making a, a quick book. But if you look around, you'll see that there's a lot of architecture here. It's all been upgraded. And there was an architect called Thomas Farnall's Pritchard, Shrewsbury based, who brought a lot of the refined architecture and a lot of the facelifts to Ludlow. So underneath many of these um, early Victorian and late Georgian properties, there's still the half-timbered medieval buildings. Uh, but the contrast between 800-year-old castle, that old Mortimer built, cool chap he was, the half-timbered medieval buildings, and although you can't see it, so in, Ludlow College is over there, and there they've had quite a modern building. And the assembly rooms are quite a modern bit as well. The castle, in about 1820, has been of limited value. This would have been completely dismantled, like a lot of our town walls have. We've still got a fair bit, but we haven't got a complete walled um, castle. But you can look through the gate there, uh, and you can at least perhaps just see what, what we have got there. That, that area in front that looks newer than medieval and Norman was the judge's chambers. So the, there's, there's a lot of it built behind there. From, when I said up until about 1640, Ludlow was quite an important law centre. So the judge's chambers and most of the activities to rule Wales were actually in there. And most of the town was effectively a, one of the, I forgot his name, I think it's Rhys was one of the Welsh senior judges that had owned most of property in Ludlow at some point. But he, if you like, was he was the game he was the poacher that became the game keeper. So when they were looking to manage the area, quite a lot of the high powered people in Ludlow actually were Welsh. Yes they were of course it's always been the case. Um, yeah, I was just thinking about Kelly Kelly Stone Kelly Stone was the seventh coming here with his bride. Yeah. No, no, it's just that he, he came here um, before his wedding uh, to the castle, um, Catherine, Catherine, young Catherine the Third, because um, not far from here, um, uh, Tom near Chippenham, there's another castle, and when the king was away, then the castle, which isn't that far from here, they, it ruled, it ran the country, um, and the connection there brought, uh, uh, brought sorry, brought King Henry there as a young prince who was looked after in this area quite a bit. Brought up round here. And if, say, Thomas Parnell Farnell had not said, look, this is useless stone, it would have been sold. Well, that didn't, didn't that's amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah. yes. It's lovely place to live, isn't it? It but is. Yeah. The cannon out the front's got nothing to do, I think that's in the Crimea the presentation. So, although you might want to think that that castle once defended Ludlow, not even against the Welsh. <laughs> The building we're in at the moment was originally the, the high school, the, the, the comp, what is now a comprehensive school. So in Ludlow, a lot of people have got fond memories of that place down there, or where we are at the moment, because that's actually their high school. They still have reunions, you know, way back. Most of that population moved out 
back to new houses out of town. And most of the houses that would have fallen into disrepair have now been bought by people that have moved here. They're now Ludlovians. So in a way, we've got a delicate balance between newcomers and the local population. And actually, most people see Ludlow as a market town. A sunny day, people come into the town. You may not live in the town now. Three generations ago, you may have owned that building and somebody else did. But your job is in Ludlow. So I think most people in Ludlow see that four successful festivals around the year, choosing to come here on the day visitors. job for a lot of local people, but I would say that it's potentially low paid. But we want to try and get the stonemasons, the furniture makers, the old trades that used to work in markets. Where there's actually if you are a young person, as, as Nigel was saying, it is introduction. Where do they earn the money? Where do they can afford a house? So if there is a future, it's that. But well, the chap who owns this place, Ben, he came up from London with his family. 13 years ago, something like that, started his own family business. This bit that I run the camp, but that I know. So we are getting new people coming in with families. It's not just a retirement town. Land that came with and, and Core Street, which we're not going to be able to see, there's more often. But within here is a courtyard, and the family that owned this uh, I can't remember what they're, 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 they would have presumably been from the wall trade, but they all had their own almost like a Medi um, Mediterranean house business and a courtyard. And that's is now uh, lots of businesses separate, but it would all have been within one plot, and the master of the house would have had everything. In his empire beneath him. So that is what I wanted you to see. That is one of the most photographed buildings, particularly by Japanese and American visitors to the town. And the balcony at the front was the addition by the then MP, so that would have been two hundred years ago, which isn't the reason to MP, that was his house, and he put that balcony there so he could talk to his uh, um, lots of subjects and explain them. But that is the most pop, the most well photographed, I think, other than the church and the castle, and constituents probably is the between the three, <laughs> the most photographed places in the country. Jail bars. Yeah, this, it's the only surviving bit of wartime time work from about 1510. <laughs> You're not going to want to do it. No, we're not going to do it. Nice lady.